Okay, so we've talked a lot about in the story of redemption, the act one started with the Trinity and this um, relationship between God, the, the Son and the Spirit and how they wanted to create beings that could love them. And they wanted to create things that they could share their love with. They're relational. They, they made us to be relational. And so, and so they started um, the plan of earth and the plan of, of Adam and Eve and, and all of what we have today. Act two, of course, is where evil enters the world. That the devil, not trusting the heart of God, not trusting that he was good, wanted to be him. He was prideful. And he decided, I can do this better than God. By God, yeah, 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 but I can do this better than God. And of course, we know that he took one third of the angels with him and, and it broke God's heart. And so God, um, Ellen White tells us, God went through with the plan of making Adam and Eve because he was wanting still that incredible relationship with us. And he had lost his angels and then he wants this relationship in such a powerful way. And so he creates Adam and Eve. But remember, the devil hates anything that reminds him of God's love, that reminds him of God's glory. And so he turns his attention onto the people that God create. That's what he does. Um, so today I'm reading about trust and about how we as Christians must trust the heart of God. We must trust that God loves us, that God believes in us, that God wants us on his side. And the minute we start to doubt God's love for us, the minute we start to see him as a tyrant, the minute we start to see him as somebody that if I don't follow these rules, then he will do this or he doesn't love me any longer. That is exactly what the devil wants us to do. Trust me in this one thing God says to us. I have given the entire earth to you for your joy explore it, awaken it, take care of it for me. That's what God told Adam and Eve. I have given you one another for love and for romance and for friendship. You will be my intimate allies. We're going to be a team. But on this one matter, you must trust me. Now that one matter might be different for everybody. It might be a relationship that's hurt you. It might be just religion in general. It might be that confidence in who you are and the way you look and having self um, confidence in, in yourself and security and that. But whatever it is that you don't trust, that you think, you know what, God, you're holding out on me. You know what, God, you're not paying attention. You're not answering my prayers. Whatever that thing is in your life, he says, I ask you to trust me in this thing. Trust that my heart towards you is good. That I am not withholding from you to hurt you. If I am withholding, it is for a reason and it is to protect you. Do not, he tells Adam and Eve, do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat from it. That's it. I have given you everything. Just trust me in this one area or you will die. And this is where our story takes a tragic turn. It takes a tragic turn in the story of redemption. It also takes a tragic turn in our own lives. The moment we allow something in our life, something that we don't trust God over. Maybe someone's unkind to you in the church and you're like, you know what? Forget it. Church is over, over, <laughs> overrated. Religion, pff, okay? I don't trust it. Or a relationship burns you. And you're like, God, if you were really there, you would have you would have kept this relationship good. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals that the Lord had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from the tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. Do not touch it, she says, or he said I would die. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good from evil. Here's the tricky thing about the devil. We've talked about this. He weaves webs of lies mixed with truth. Is it true that they became like God? Yeah, they became just like God. Now they saw evil. Now they saw the taintedness of the world around them. They didn't see the joy that they had seen before. Yes, they became like God in the sense that 
Now they recognize that there was true, pure evil out there in the world, but they didn't become like God and becoming a God. So the devil just kind of, oh, oh, just a tiny, tiny little bit. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took it and she ate of it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Always interesting. Genesis 3, 1 through 6, she gave it to her husband who was with her, remembering that Adam and Eve were not going through this temptation as, as alone as we think. It, Adam made that second choice after the serpent to say, you know what? I don't trust God. My wife has now eaten this. She might be lost or something bad might happen to her. I don't trust that God will help her. I don't trust that God will protect us. I don't trust that maybe if I don't do this, the same thing won't happen to me. And he listens to her. He, he believes her and, and he's swayed by her. He's basically peer pressured, right? Into saying, whoa, if, if you did this, I'm going to do it, right? If we both go down, we're going to go down together. Not really, not really a good plan when it comes to things that are, that are not godly. Also, remember when they first took that bite of the fruit, did they die? No, they were fine. They were like, God lied to us. God said that if we ate this, we would die. And here we are alive. And so their, their, their doubt was actually strengthened in that. So often we do this in our own lives. We do things that really, maybe our parents, maybe friends, maybe our teachers, maybe the church is telling us, hey, this is, this is something that can lead you away from God. Remember what Dr. Ortiz talked about? One step is a big deal. But we don't feel like it was a big deal. I just took that step Nothing's happening. Nothing's changing. I still have a really strong relationship with God. My, my life is the same. But those one step, they kind of eat away at what the devil is trying to convince us of. Evil was lurking in the garden. Do you think it's still lurking on this earth? Oh, you bet. The mighty angel had been once glorious, more glorious than all. If you recall, he was captain of the Lord's armies. That's what he got mad about, is that he was going to have to answer to Jesus, right? He had been captain of the Lord's armies. Beautiful and powerful beyond compare, but he rebelled against his creator. He led a great battle against the forces of heaven and was cast down. Banished, but not destroyed, he waited in the shadows for an opportunity to take his revenge. How did he take his revenge? Hmm. You must understand that the evil one hates God. Hates him, loathes him. He hates anything that reminds him of the glory of God wherever it exists. Unable to overthrow the mighty one, he then turned his sights on those who bear his image. That's you and that's me. We are image bearers of the mighty God. How cool is that? How often do we forget that when we look at ourselves in the mirror and we might tease parts of our body or we like, oh, I wish I didn't laugh so loud or I wish my friends thought I was cooler or this or that. or that. Stop. You were made in the image of a mighty God. That is whose image you bear. And the devil hates us because of that. Satan came into the garden and whispered to Adam and Eve, and he whispers to us today, you cannot trust the heart of God. He's holding out on you. You need to take matters into your own hands. You need to take back the control. He sows the seed of mistrust in our hearts and he tempts us to control our own lives. It's the same lie that he uses in your life today. By the way, trusting God, he says, psh, too risky. Also, I mean, is he really trustworthy? He kind of asks you to do a lot of things and don't do a lot of things. He makes all these rules and kind of limits your life. It's like he's controlling you. It'd be better for you to just do what you think is right. Trust your own heart, he tells us. Don't, don't trust him. You need to take control. Arrange your own happiness. Disregard him. The evil one lied to us about where true life is found. And unfortunately, Adam and Eve, they believed him. We believe him. We believe sometimes that God doesn't have, that the things that, that we're told by him that are, are good for us or that are bad for us, mm, he doesn't really know what he's talking about. So I urge you today, today as you go throughout your day and you, you go and you're with your family and you're doing your schoolwork and you get frustrated and the devil starts to kind of throw those little lies on you that says, you know what, you know, God doesn't really want to help you with this. Or, you know what, it, 
you know, you, you weren't made in the image of God. You've got a lot of flaws. Whenever those doubts start to kind of tuck into your mind, when you start thinking that, you know what, this seems like a lot of work being a Christian, just tell the devil, oh, no, 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 no. I know what you're doing here. You're trying to feed me fruit that's bad for me. I'm not going to believe it. And take the time to say, God, I don't, in my heart, I kind of believe what the devil's telling me, but I'm going to choose today to trust you. I trust that your heart towards me is good and that whatever it is that I'm struggling with, you can help me through it. All right, guys, have a great day.